So, in this problem, we're picking up where we left in the uh, second freefall video. This is the third freefall video. We're asked in part B, how much time is the flea in the air? Now remember, the flea started here at y equals zero, according to our previous work, went up. When we stopped earlier to find out how fast the flea had to move to go up, and we found that answer that his initial velocity was 2.94 meters per second. So I know that from last time. I know the acceleration is minus g, or minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Time, I don't know. It's what I'm asked here. His initial position was 0 meters. If it says time in the air, well, he went up, and then he came right back down to here. So his final location is also 0 meters. What about his final velocity? Well, it turns out he originally was going up at 2.94 meters per second. I know that on the way down, he'll be at 2.94 meters per second just before he hits the ground. So this should be minus v, why not? I know that. Now, if you don't know that, let me show you that you could find it. I know it because I talked to you about it in the second video. Since this is zero, and that is zero, this whole term wipes out. So the square of his final speed, or final velocity's magnitude here, has to equal the initial squared. Well, the only way that could be is that either vy is equal to vy naught, meaning that they're both going up, which we see from our diagram can't be true. The flea went up on initially, but it's on its way down in the negative direction. Or vy could be the minus of vy naught, because when you square both of that, you're going to lose this minus sign. So this equation right here tells you this fact. Of course, that's all it does. And since I knew this, this equation will not be of any use in solving anything else. Notice it also doesn't have t, which is what I'm looking for in this problem. So I'm concentrating on solving these two problems. Now there's still only one unknown in this problem, and there's two equations. So again, there's more than one way, obviously, to work this problem. I'm going to work it in a couple of different ways to show you some math skills and some math tricks, as well as just get the answer to this problem. Notice this was zero, this was zero, so I'm going to rewrite that equation. Zero is equal to v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. This is a second order equation. It has a second, a two, for the highest exponent. That means there's two answers to this equation. This flea was at y equals zero at two different times. Of course he was. He was at y equals zero initially at t equals zero and later at some other time. Now I know that t is greater than zero. But I want to show you that when you divide out of t, let's say, you're throwing away a solution. A better way to work such problems is to do it this way. Factor the t out. v y naught plus one half a y times t times the term t. So there's one term, there's a second term. If either of those terms is equal to zero, then you'll get this equation. So one solution is t equals zero. That's when this term is zero. Or another term is zero equal v y naught plus one half a y times time. Now it turns out this equation is not the one we want because we're asked how much time is in the air. We're not asked does he originally start at y equals zero. So this one, we know it has to be greater than zero. He's in the air. So this is what's called an extraneous solution. But you want to be careful that you eliminate solutions because you know it doesn't fit your problem and not because the way you do math throws away answers. Okay, so when you have something equal to zero, I strongly urge you to factor and not do division, like divide by t. Dividing by t is only valid if t was not zero. So you, by doing divide by t, has already thrown away an answer, t equals zero, because you said that can't be true. And you have to make sure that you really realize that. It'll get you in later courses. This one here, we can solve for t, one half a y t is minus v y naught t 
is minus 2 vy naught over ay. Let me roll up just a minute. T is equal to, but ay is minus g. And the minus over minus cancels, and we get 2 vy naught over g. And that is the answer to our problem. The numbers at the end are worth a point along with the unit. Most of the points on the test is working this thing through, making sure you understand how to do this. Notice if I double the initial speed, I double the time. If I do this on planet like the moon that has one sixth G, then that means that the thing will stay in the air six times longer. You can't get those type of answers and insights if you're plugging in numbers. Now, at the end, you might want a number. Some classes, actually, in college, you won't care because they won't want it. They'll want only the formula. Let's put in some numbers here. T is equal approximately to 2 times 2.94 meters per second over 9.8 meters per second squared. I see the meters cancel. One of the seconds cancels and seconds comes to the top. So it's got the right units. I have about 10 on the bottom. 2 times 2.94 is about 6 on the top. So I have about 6 divided by 10. That should be about 0.6 seconds. Well, I can punch a calculator and get an exact number. And I get 0 0.6 seconds. Exactly. So I accidentally hit my little button on my pin. So 0 0.6 seconds. That's a second, not a five. Um, let's go back and show you that there was another way to get the same thing. What if we had decided not to use this equation, I mean up here, this equation, but to use this equation right there? Let's assume that's the equation that we chose to use. I'll get exactly the same answer. Let me show you that. So, I'm going to rework the problem again. His final velocity was minus v y naught, and that had to be equal to a y t. So, if I just put in this final velocity minus v y naught in for v y, and now try to solve for t again. So. I'm going to bring this to the other side, and I have AYT is minus 2 VY naught. T is minus 2 VY naught over AY. Notice that's exactly the same equation we had right there. Put in your minus G. So you get exactly the same equation even though you did it from a different kinematic equation. There are more than one way to skin a cat. All right? It's systematically setting up problems, thinking your way through that makes you a good problem solver. What you don't want to do is have a system in which you hope to get inspired to come up with. Inspiration is to realize that you have the kinematic equations. It's not to solve them. Algebra should be systematic. So I strongly suggest on working kinematic equations that you build this table every time, every time write down these equations, every time draw a good picture diagram. If you do that and look to see what you know and don't know, you will be systematic and you'll be able to work any kinematic problem that anyone can ever send you because there's only one, two, three equations, so there's really only three types of kinematic problems you can have. They just look different but they really can't be different. That's what the math tells you. All right, that finishes this discussion of free fall bodies.